Google has nothing but glowing reviews for Perry Homes, but we need to dig a little deeper. Well, hey there, this is Wendy Pinnell, and let's talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly with Perry Homes, starting out with their contracts, okay? Because this is where the rubber meets the road. I mean, you can have the highest quality builder out there, but if they use a bad contract, you should walk away before you fall in love, right? Because if you've watched any of my videos, you know builder contracts are written by attorneys to benefit the builder. And they're almost always predatory in some way, right? And, and Perry Homes are no exception. Okay, so let's dig into that, okay? What do you need to know about the Perry Homes contract and what should you look out for? So let's start out with a really important one and one that, you know, quite frankly, Perry is very predatory on. All right, so here goes. Okay, you ready? Under what circumstances can you get your deposit back? All right, so let's take a look at the actual contract, all right? And this is the first thing we read, okay? You ready? Purchaser may terminate this contract and receive a refund of the earnest money minus a termination fee to seller of 50% of the earnest money only if purchaser fails to qualify for financing and notify seller of same in writing within 14 days after the date of this contract. Okay, so did you catch that? All right, the Perry Homes contract tells us you will lose 50% of your deposit the minute you pay it, even if you do everything right when you terminate. Okay, so, so that's that's pretty predatory, right? So why would that be? All right, well, as they put it, okay, the termination fee above is an appropriate remedy and reasonable and foreseeable estimate of damages that seller may incur incident to purchaser's failure to qualify for financing. I mean, sure, Perry, okay, I'm sure you've incurred like a lot of damages here, like totally worth half of my $30,000 deposit. But at least if your financing falls through, you're getting 50% back, right? Let's talk about what reasons you can lose your entire deposit over, okay? The contract gives us a whole list, okay? Here's what it has to say. If purchaser fails to close and fund within the time specified herein, Purchaser unreasonably refuses to cooperate with the lenders, provides any instructions to the lenders that would make loan approval difficult or impossible, or cancels the loan application process. Seller is unable to contact purchaser for a period of 10 days or more. Okay, so let's break that down. All right, number one, according to the contract, you have to close on time. Okay, number two, you have to be responsive with the lender. Number three, you have to be responsive with the builder or you're in default of the contract, okay? And you could lose all of your deposit, all right? So if you're buying a Perry home, all right, don't plan any 10-day vacations, you know, or get so busy with work that you forget to check your email. Next, many of you have heard me talk about the dreaded convenience clause, okay? And if you haven't, basically the convenience clause allows the builder to get out of the contract for any reason at all, okay? So if it's convenient for them, they can get out of the contract. So the question is, is the convenience clause in the Perry Homes contract? Well, it's a little tricky here, okay? Because it's not specifically called a convenience clause within the contract, but if you disagree with them, okay, then it turns that way in a hurry. Okay, so here's what I mean. From the contract, all right, you ready? If seller in its sole discretion determines that any dispute, force majeure, misunderstanding, or failure of communication exists between purchaser and seller on or before closing an impasse, and such impasse has not been resolved completely to seller's satisfaction on or before the closing date, seller shall have the right upon notice to purchaser to terminate this contract. So according to that clause in the contract, okay, if you can't work it out, the seller's gonna say so long, right? So if you guys can't agree, that's it, so long. A and they're not totally awful here, okay? You do get your deposit back, but you don't get the house you wanted. A and they do make it very clear that regardless of the inconvenience of losing your house, getting money you've put in is all you're getting back, okay? Regarding that money, they say the parties agree and stipulate is an appropriate remedy. And also it shall be the sole and exclusive remedy to purchaser. And again, upon such return to purchaser, neither seller nor purchaser shall have any further obligations, 
claims or causes of action to or against the other. So it's important to make note of that because a lot of times in contracts, you'll see like mediation clauses, you know, if the parties can't agree, you'll have mediation. So you just have to know that within a Perry contract, right, if you can't work it out, okay, there's no mediation clause. It's just that the seller has the right to just terminate the contract. So it's really important to know. Okay, earlier I mentioned that the Perry contract states that it will keep your earnest money if you don't close on time. Well, it turns out that's not the only penalty you'll get, okay? Perry states in their contract that if purchaser fails to timely perform any obligation of purchaser under this contract, seller shall have the right as seller's sole and exclusive remedy to terminate this contract and to retain the earnest money, change order deposits, and any other sums paid to seller as liquidated damages. So you stand to lose your earnest money, right? Your deposit, your house, and any other money you've had to put up until this point. So this is not the situation where you wanna be switching lenders a week before closing. And, and we are gonna see that most builders are like that, okay? So always with new construction, make sure you're able to close on time. Moving on, I'm sure you've all heard me talk about the CCRs in a community and how important it is that you read those, okay? CCNRs, conditions, covenants, and restrictions. All right, so does Perry include CCNRs within their contracts or do you have to go hunt for them? In their notice of membership in Property Owners Association, they write, copies of the restrictive covenants and dedicatory instruments may be obtained from the county clerk, okay? So they've let us know where to find it, okay? But this becomes on you. Go and obtain that information prior to signing a contract and making a lasting commitment, okay? Because you need to know what kind of neighborhood restrictions you're going to have and that you're agreeing to. Because remember, again, you're losing at least half of that money the minute money changes hands. So CCNRs, you're gonna to have to refine them on your own, right? And you need to make sure that you do that. Okay, let's talk about another really sticky issue that we run into with new construction. Let's talk about property tax finality for a moment, okay? Now, property taxes often become quite a problem for home buyers, okay? You see what happens is a builder always pays the taxes on however the house is assessed at time of closing and generally won't pay a shortage afterwards, okay? And that's the way it is with you know every sales transaction. And the problem here that comes into play with new construction is that it is often assessed at land value only, okay? So because of this, you'll likely have a huge escrow shortage the first year. Once the house has been assessed according to the value of the land and the brand new home on it, those taxes are gonna be raised significantly. Most of the time, builder contracts are going to say the proration is final, so you wanna look out for this. All right, so how does Perry Homes handle it? Okay, well, here's what their contract says. Seller shall pay all ad valorem taxes upon the property through and including the preceding year. Taxes, maintenance fees, assessments, and dues for the current year shall be prorated between seller and purchaser as of the closing date, unless otherwise agreed to by the parties in writing. So remember, most builder contracts are going to say that the proration is final. So I like that Perry Homes leave the slimmest option that you could have another arrangement if it's agreed to by the parties in writing. You'll still have to do a good bit of work, you know, here to try to arrange that agreement, okay? But it is there in the contract, leaving it as a possibility. Okay, so now that you have a rough idea of what you'd be getting yourself into if you sign a contract with Perry, how about Perry Homes themselves as builders, okay? Well, one thing you need to know is they're about at like a mid to high range priced builder here in the Dallas area. Uh, they're a pretty large company, okay? According to the Perry Homes website, they have over 90 communities and 65,000 families served. In fact, they even report, we are one of Texas's largest and most trusted home builders, okay? So that's a pretty confident claim, but the company has been around since 1967. All right, so what about Perry Homes like architectural style, okay? Is that gonna work for you. Uh, and this, I can tell you, this is where they're very popular, okay? The majority of Perry homes in the Dallas area, they all tend to have like a similar front elevation, right? And the way Perry describes it is like a transitional style with a combination of medium pitched gable and hipped roofs paired with oversized windows. They do have some elevations with the low pitched roofing, but not nearly as many. So, you know, people who like that particular style of like the angular high pitched roof, 
okay, they are really drawn to pairing homes. And most of the time, you'll also have like a wall of windows in the back, all right? And that is just like a hugely desirable feature right now, right? Because it, right, and it's obviously because it brings in so much natural light. Also, there are many one-story options with Perry. Okay, so like whenever we have a buyer in an upper price range who's like, hey, Wendy, I want a nice home, but it has to be a one-story home. Okay, so whenever I hear that, like Perry Homes always comes to mind. For example, in the Mustang Lakes subdivision in Salina, 15 of the 19 homes that they offer come with a one story. And it's like that in most of their communities. Like I said earlier, Perry Homes tends to be on the mid to higher end of price ranges when it comes to builders in the DFW area. So I did a quick CMA to see what they have in terms of price range as of right now, like this very minute, okay? And it ranges like 350,000 in Rome to roughly 900,000 in Salina. Now the 900,000 in Salina didn't surprise me at all, right? But I definitely did not expect to see a Perry home available for 350,000. So if you're in love with Perry homes, you know, and you wanna know where you can score a Perry for 350,000, you wanna check out the Reunion subdivision in Rome, okay? So if you're like, well, okay, where's Rome? Rome's located due west of Fort Worth, sort of like on the northwest side. Now that being said, you know, if the west side of DFW doesn't work for you, okay, where else can you find Perry Homes? Well, you'll find the largest concentration of them on the north side in Collin County. And this area is just full of new construction communities all the way around. Uh, you can also find a smattering of them in the east, west, and then south sides of DFW as well. Now, Perry tends to build in master plan communities with other builders and a separate developer. So even in Rome, right where I was describing earlier, the Reunion subdivision has American Legend, Perry Homes, and Union Main Homes. So when you hear Perry Homes, okay, just know that you'll probably see a nice master plan model, you know, hopefully with plenty of amenities. Now I should point out, okay, that that's not always the case. All right, for example, their Lakes of Summercrest subdivision in Midlothian, that's like a boutique community and it doesn't have any amenities, all right, other than it being gated. But by and large, okay, you tend to find Perry homes and amenities go hand in hand. Now, if you're like, hey, you know, Wendy, I just have to have a Perry home and the location really doesn't matter a whole lot, okay, you will definitely find a huge range in pricing when it comes to locations, okay? For example, in Cambridge Crossing, in Salina, you can score the 2513 model for 621,900, while an M3 Ranch in Mansfield, you get the same model for only 560,900. And in Devonshire and Forney, the website shows that same floor plan for even less, just 499,900. Now, before you go racing over to Forney to get the best price, okay, do keep in mind the median sales price rule, all right? If you're gonna buy a home for 500,000, try to have nicer, more expensive homes around you, okay? So kind of like the rule of thumb I like to follow is it's best to not be the most expensive home on the block. Now, I do wanna tell you something else that's really nice about Perry Homes, okay? And that is their warranty. All right, there are over 150 references to the word warranty in their contract, okay? So the warranty is a very big deal to them. A few things you should know about it is that they service it themselves, okay? So like in-house, so to speak. Many builders have other companies servicing the warranties, okay? That's not the case with Perry. Also, okay, and this is really noteworthy, Perry offers a 210 warranty. All right, most builders offer what's known as a one to 10 warranty, okay? They'll cover like functional items for the first year, two years for mechanical and 10 years for structural, okay? So that's not the case with Perry. They offer a full two years for both functional and mechanical, okay? So, you know, with Perry, you essentially get an extra full year warranty on functional items if you go with Perry, right? And I must say, okay, our personal experience has been that our clients have been extremely happy with their Perry home. Okay, so if you're pretty close to deciding on Perry at this point, you probably wanna know what's standard and what's not when it comes to design features. All right, being one of the nicer builders out there, there are obviously a lot of standard features, but what you wanna seek out, okay, is the ones that are out of the norm or that should be included but aren't. Now, one thing I've always found notable, okay, and not in a great way, is that your higher 
here in Perry Homes come standard with like a low grade carpet on the main floor. I mean, I feel like if I'm buying, you know, a $700,000 home, I shouldn't have to pay extra for nice flooring in the living room. Other standard features include a pestle sink in the powder bath and tile as your only alternative flooring. If you want wood look tile or luxury vinyl plank, okay, that's all gonna be an upgrade you'll have to pay for. So Perry does have some generous items that come standard, but plenty that don't, okay? So if you want to do a new build with Perry Homes, allow a generous budget for the design upgrades, okay? Because you're going to need them. In terms of their website, it's an easy to use navigable site, okay? You can filter by region, sub-region, and by city. Under their main filters, they list all of their communities. And I will say, it would be nice if they listed what cities those were in. All right, they list their current incentives right on the open. Okay, so that's really nice. Another thing I like about their website is it's easy to find their list of standard features, okay? And you definitely want to always read over that carefully. But what do others have to say about Perry Homes? All right, well, I always like to take it local first, okay? So if you take a look at Google reviews, okay? M3 Ranch in Mansfield gives a rating of 4.7 out of five. Lakes of Summercrest gives a 4.9, Devonshire gives a 4.7, Watercrest gives a 4.7, and with 46 reviews, Perry Homes at Prairie Oaks gets a full five star review. Cambridge Crossing gives a 4.9 star review, Trinity Falls gives a five, Mustang Lakes gives a five, and Parks at Wilson Creek also gives a five. So at a local level, okay, Perry Homes get outstanding reviews. But how about on a national scale? Well, Consumer Affairs gives them 1.4 stars, and the Better Business Bureau gives a B minus rating. And that is not really what I expected, all right? So I went into Consumer Affairs and I entered like a dozen or so builders and they all had one-star reviews. So take from that what you will, okay? Either way though, you have some mixed reviews here, okay? And that can be really disconcerting. So on the one hand, right, we have literally hundreds of outstanding local reviews throughout the Dallas area. But on the other hand, okay, you have, you know, like consumer affairs. If you really wanna know more about the value of Perry Homes themselves though, honestly, an objective third party is huge, okay? So we need to talk about home inspections, all right? What is Perry's policy when it comes to allowing third party inspections? And you might be wondering like why I would even ask that, but Perry sets up some pretty strict rules to having their homes inspected. For example, they require an inspector to give them prior notice. All right, well, that's not terrible, but they also require an inspector to carry five times the amount of insurance that the Texas Real Estate Commission does. So if you have an inspector out there carrying their $100,000 policy ride and you say, hey, will you inspect you know, my Perry home? You know, they may very well decline because to inspect your one home, they would have to get five times the amount of insurance. This is how the contract reads. Any inspections performed by purchasers shall be performed by individuals and or companies that carry general liability insurance in an amount not less than 500,000 and provide seller with a certificate of insurance. So Perry Homes is going to require the inspector to have five times the amount required by TREC. Now, after the inspection, Perry also has requirements for the inspection report. Things like having to include code references, okay? Having to be done within a certain time period. All right, we're talking about that sort of thing. So again, let's go back to the contract, okay? Perry requires inspectors to provide the results of any inspection to seller in writing detailing any alleged violations of any applicable building codes or standards with citations to the relevant provisions. This whole idea of a builder making it hard to have their homes inspected may seem like a very foreign idea, but it is actually happening with more and more builders throughout Dallas. In fact, I did an entire video about home inspectors being shut out of new construction. You can watch that video right here. In the meantime, Wendy out.